monarch butterfly has become a spectacular and unmentioned wonder of the planet and a must to visit. On July 2008, the Monarch Butterfly Biosphere Reserve was inscribed in the World Heritage List by UNESCO officials. What is it that makes this species so unique and how did it manage to unite Canada, USA and Mexico? It's a symbol. It's a symbol. It's inspiring. It gives meaning to life. We are proud that on July 7, UNESCO officials inscribed the Monarch Butterfly Biosphere Reserve in the World Heritage List. He is emblematic, in my view, of the intertwined and integrated environment that we have in North America. It's the symbol of three countries working together. The monarch butterfly is a unique species in our planet. It has existed for millions of years. Its development may be divided in four stages. The female butterfly produces an average of 400 eggs of approximately 2 millimeters in circumference. The eggs are laid by the females during spring and summer breeding months. The eggs hatch after four days, revealing worm-like larvae, the caterpillars. The caterpillars consume their egg cases, then feed on milkweed. In the pupa stage, the caterpillar spins a silk pad on a twig and hangs from this pad by its last pair of prolegs. The chrysalis darkens actually becomes transparent a day before it emerges, and its orange and black wings can be seen. The mature butterfly emerges after about two pupil weeks and hangs from the split chrysalis for several hours until its wings are dry, often in the morning. Meanwhile, fluids are pumped into the crinkled wings until they become full and stiff. Some of this orangey fluid drips from the wings. Finally, usually in the afternoon, the monarch spreads its wings, quivers them to be sure they are stiff, and then flies away. But the most extraordinary characteristic of the monarch butterfly is its winter getaway. They travel approximately 4,000 kilometers, migrating from Canada in the month of September to arrive to spend winter in the forest of the state of Michoacan, Mexico, in the beginning of November. But this hibernation period wouldn't be possible without the fifth generation. An average generation of monarch butterflies lives between four or five weeks, while the fifth generation, or also known as Methuselah's generation, may live up to nine months. Surprisingly, scientists began the research on the monarch butterfly half a century ago, although it has existed since prehistoric times. The real focus in biological research over the last, you know, up until uh, quite recently, in the last 20 to 30 years, was to try to um, document all of the, uh, particularly the mammal species and other major taxa uh, throughout the world. Insects were not really uh, a major area of focus, except for agronomists and so on. It's, it's really, we've expanded the areas, the edges of the envelope a little bit because we've begun to realize that there are insect species around the world. Um, ants, um, you know, the social insects like ants, uh, bees, uh, those types of insects that are incredible, that have uh, dynamics that are very, very interesting. Era poco conocido por la población. No one knew about this extraordinary and beautiful phenomenon occurring in the state of Michoacán and Mexico, only 100 kilometers from Mexico City, our capital. This lack of information arose many stories and beliefs related to this insect. Various Mexican cultures thought 
these butterflies were the souls of people who had already passed away because their arrival coincided with a very significant holiday, El Día de los Muertos, which refers to the remembrance of their dead loved ones. Monica Herzig, subdirector of the National Commission of Protected Areas in Mexico, tells us about how her grandmother had an encounter with the monarch butterfly. Mi abuelita era una señora... My grandmother was a very adventurous woman from Switzerland. She came to Mexico with my grandfather during the Mexican Revolution in 1909. Later, when she was 60 years old, they built a small house in Valle de Bravo. She and her friends would drive there on weekends. She told me about the times when on her way to Valle de Bravo, she saw lots of doves, and in my young mind, I imagined she meant pigeons. I said to myself, how strange to see so many birds flying all together. What were all these birds doing there? It wasn't until the monarch sanctuaries were discovered that I realized that in this part of Estado de México and Michoacán, the monarch was referred to as a dove. So what my grandmother was talking about was when the monarch crossed the road on their way to Valle de Bravo. Currently, information and research has spread out. Researchers point out that the monarch is at high risk. In 10 years, we'll be able to say it. If we don't do something about it, in 10 years, we're going to see a dramatic change in the monarch population due to forest fragmentation in the hibernating zone. Thanks to its reproduction and adaptability, the monarch is not yet classified as an endangered species. Nevertheless, its reproduction and hibernating habitat is highly threatened. The monarch butterfly is not, not yet classified as an endangered species, and that's migratory cycle is in danger simply because of the fact that the monarch butterfly has to cross thousands of kilometers of terrain with basically through hot through hostile environments we need to preserve the reproduction and hibernating habitat if we want the monarch butterfly to survive Canada and the United States are mainly where the reproduction problem exists due to the transformation of milkweed areas a plant by which the larva eats. And if this hibernating habitat disappears, then the adult monarch will die because they're the ones to produce the eggs which allow the larva to complete the cycle. Without the adult monarch, it will be impossible to continue the cycle. Something alarming and worth mentioning is that the overwinter of this species is at high risk. And if it were to stop traveling to Mexico, the monarch biosphere, the life of a wide range of animals and natural species, would be at risk. The development of communities would also be threatened, thus allowing the monarch to become a natural thermometer. Currently, the monarch's habitat is at risk due to the following two factors. Global warming could cause increase in the Earth's temperature, causing warm climate areas of Mexico and United States to become arid while the upper northern parts of Canada and United States would change from extreme cold climates to warmer climates, therefore bringing life to these places. What is going to happen in the north if the temperature increases one degree? Glaciers will melt. Drastic changes will occur, but in some cases, we may say, these changes will relatively be positive. Precipitation will increase in the highest latitudes of the USA and Canada, but in the most arid parts of Mexico and our continent, erosion and temperature will increase. There will be much more thermic pressure on the ecosystems that are left. The highest zones will remain cooler and organisms that are adapted to these conditions will tend to migrate. At the same time, their habitat will move along with them. The problem is, if there is no place to move, it will not be possible for the species to adapt. These changes are impossible to avoid, but somehow the effects can be mitigated. Currently, the government and various organizations are trying to stop illegal deforestation, plagues and fires. 
the most important issue is to convert these areas into cultivating lands. However, in order to preserve the monarch's habitat, we must work together as a team to obtain an international solution. The only thing we've done wrong is that we're slow in getting our act together. We've, there have been many missed opportunities. And I'm not just talking about the monarch butterfly here, I'm talking about many, many other uh, conservation issues. We've been very slow to come around to understand that these issues are not just about conserving an insect or conserving a species somewhere, but it also directly uh, impacts on us. And it doesn't matter what language I'm speaking, I am willing to work with you to save the monarch butterfly. Canada, United States and Mexico have their own characteristics. They each have different government, social and economic structure. In spite of this, the Commission for Environmental Cooperation launched a plan which has managed to unite all of North America in the battle to preserve the monarch butterfly. And this is an opportunity to do so. And um, all three uh, governments, all three countries are committed to it. And uh, we can use it now as a platform for coordinating our work on the ground, for fundraising, for improving our understanding of the biology of the monarch butterfly. This plan was a tool used by Mexico to convince Canada and the United States, as well as the rest of the world, to inscribe the monarch butterfly in the human heritage list. Both the plan and each of the specialists acknowledge that in spite of the differences between the countries involved, there are many similarities that bring us to believe that all the efforts and problems must be worked out as a team. Illegal deforestation in Canada and the preservation of milkweed is a fundamental issue. In the United States, the use of pesticides and chemicals that kill the butterfly's offspring is one of the major challenges to confront. The migrating route of the monarch flies over the populated areas of this country, causing urbanization not to allow the existence of these places of food and lounge of the monarch. We need to consider expanding the boundaries of the present monarch biosphere reserve and migration way the purpose is to get new plantations, new developments of the forest species, which feed the monarch. This is said to be a challenge because urbanization is taking place, so we are leaving no breathing space for the species. On the other hand, as opposed to the United States, Mexico has what we call ejidos, which are lands owned by communal land members, and a great deal of them not only live here, but depend on these lands financially. 70 to 75 percent of the forests in the Estado de Mexico are communal owned lands, and only 20 percent at the most are privately owned. Therefore, this represents an obstacle which must be understood and resolved. We just can ask the owners of these lands to stop using the biosphere reserve and expect them to survive. We have created a program to pay them to preserve the forest. Thanks to the programs to pay them to preserve the forest, we have created a type of temporary job, which also allows groups of 10 to 12 people to commit to activities such as monitoring, preservation, conservation, and salaries that allow to create jobs. During the four hibernating months of the monarch, tourism in crisis, and we make some bucks too. This has caused government effort to be insufficient and has created the need for non-governmental organizations to help these poor communities create sustainable programs where they may monitor, take care of, and preserve the forests, avoiding illegal deforestation at the same time. These communities take advantage of the ecotourism and governmental support.
The NGO has taken the place of the government for various reasons, and they were different 20 years ago, 10 years ago, and today. It's not a matter of getting funds and infrastructure. The question is, can the communities grow with infrastructure only? The answer we have found, along with other government offices, is that is not enough. We must create a social construction process linked to this construction infrastructure project. Sustainable development means to develop programs, increase the economy of the community, build different ecological businesses, to improve life conditions, and at the same time to conserve nature. However, the communal land members still have the problem of culture and information that little by little has been mitigated and at the same time has created conscience in society. The work of the foundations is to create a conscience in society. They have shown what's the real problem for the foreigner. Thanks to this effort, we already have documental and visual information. This true information has caused social acts. We are trying to create conscience in the people. They cannot drive so fast. They must drive slower to protect the modern butterfly. We're going to watch over the roads. These issues yell out to the organizations, investors and sponsors to cause a stronger commitment because fundraising is essential in this effort. We must work harder. We must have a better training system. We must work in the organizations and in development of projects and plans with economical investment. This is the way to get the communal land member and farmer support. We need to work with the forest owner. I guess a private and governmental investor is very important and needed. This investor should be a compromise to cooperate with the purpose to develop needed planets in the communities. Currently, society has commercialized the monarch butterfly, and it has made it an identity symbol. In the USA, they are sold by the dozen for special occasions. This has made the monarch butterfly an important topic to society. But the modern preservation is a need of the communal land and society. If we just look out for the part we have to take care of, not only the monarch butterfly, but it's for all those who live in these lands. And all the people that live in the city depend on these lands. If the monarch moves to another habitat or becomes extinct, humanity along with the fauna and flora will be in danger to the point where people who live in the biosphere or the migration way would find themselves threatened by a natural disaster. No es conservar la naturaleza por sí misma. It's not a matter to conserve nature alone, but by conserving it, we are conserving humanity. Conserving humanity. I can